nothing like living a simple life. Something out those aches and pains from working on the farm. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. And today I think it is time to do a three year follow up on my Kubota BX series tractor. This is a 25D, but honestly, if you have any BX series tractor from Kubota, this review probably will apply to you. This is a 2012 model. I bought it in, uh, what was it, the end of 2017 or early 2018. And it was a big deal to purchase something uh, this expensive for the farm. But after three years, I can tell you that I have been very, very pleased. And I kind of wish I had bought it even earlier. I wish I bought it the first year we moved up here. It does a lot of stuff and it does pretty much all of it really well. All right, now this model here is a 25D and that means that it comes, comes with a backhoe and here's a picture and a video, a little short clip of it doing some work with that backhoe when I did the extant, expansion that you might be able to see here. And I'm getting ready to do some more work with it um, this spring. But oftentimes the backhoe sits off of it. I know a lot of people are on the fence after whether they need a backhoe or not. And I can't speak for all of you because all of your individual uh, you know, needs may be different than mine, but I was really on the fence about it because it's so much more expensive to buy one of these things with a backhoe. And you can't add a backhoe to a lesser version. You have to get the 25. I think the new version is the 23. Either way, you've got to get the top of the line in order to be able to use the backhoe. In my case, I have probably used the backhoe no more than 20 hours out of the 250 hours that I've had this tractor. But I will say for those 20 hours, they probably saved me 100 hours of digging with a shovel. So for me, it was worth it. Now on the loader end, uh, pretty much all of these are available with loaders. And if they're not, you can obviously buy a loader add-on for it. Uh, the loader gets used a bunch. I'd say the loader's probably been used for 100 hours. Driveway work, backblading the driveway, uh, spreading gravel, um, digging out earth that's you know in a hill bank so you can get right into it. That all works cleaning out the chicken coops, stuff like that is very useful for that. And, um, you know, there's some other stuff that you just don't really think about that you can use it for. I actually use this to uh, pull a motor out here in the yard. I used it instead of a cherry picker. So that was really cool. And then after I bought this thing, um, it did not come with a bin mount mower. And I went ahead and got the 60 inch mid mount mower. And I now use it to mow the whole property. I don't use the garden tractor for that anymore. In that service, it is probably not quite as capable as a regular garden tractor would be, but it still does a great job. We don't care what our grass looks like here, you know, whether it has that beautiful patterning or anything like that. But if you're a perfectionist for your property, this mower deck is probably not the one for you. And I have some other attachments. I have a three point hitch for the back of this, and I've made some videos if you want to dig around in the channel, you'll find them of uh, being able to hook uh, garden tractor sleeve hitch attachments to this and also using it with regular three point hitch category zero, I think it is, is the, is the level that it can handle. And I've got a snow plow. I bought a Johnny Products Senior uh, snow plow for it that operates off the hydraulics. And so that's how we maintain the property here. So with all that, you know, it really starts to be a useful machine. Let me go ahead and take it off. I'll talk about uh, the features that it has and I'll talk to you about the very few problems that I've had with it. And I'm fixing to pull it in and do uh, fall maintenance on it. Every year I do an oil change filters and, and all the good stuff there. Sometimes we do the transmission, although it's not due for this one. And I'll make a separate video showing you all how to go through that. But I have made some upgrades to it and I'll, I'll just walk Here around and are. show you some Like of that I stuff. said, I'm getting ready Let's to pull it. it in because it's almost time to attach the plow. I do need to hook the loader up today and do some quick work with that before moving it completely into winter mode. And I do want to do an oil change and just a regular service. So here it is. It's got about 540 hours on it now. And I bought it with, uh, I think it was 325. So put a, put a good amount of hours on it and, uh, and really haven't been disappointed at all. You will notice the front here had a, a silver uh, brush guard, like a really heavy duty metal brush guard. The reason that's off is in order to mount the snow plow, the Johnny Products Junior snow plow, you have to remove that. So I've kind of just already been swapping that over. But up front here, um, the headlights, they're pretty darn bright for plowing snow in the dark, which is what I usually do. Now this is a four wheel drive model and I do have the uh, ag tires on this one. Although they're definitely starting to show some wear. I have not had any failures on those, which is kind of cool. This one is a 25D. And that means that it has a more beefy frame along the back here, especially with reinforcements to add the backhoe. Up here is our brackets for our loader. And our four-way loader valve is there. Right. 
And uh, here is one of the things that I'll be cleaning out today. This is uh, your screen for your radiator that's blowing air, and it just gets so covered in stuff there. So we'll be taking that out, cleaning it. There's actually a filter on the inside here, and I'll get to that in my other video that I'm going to clean as well. But here's our four-way loader control valve, forward, and our parking brake. The only uh, issue with the parking brake is sometimes you got to set it a few times for it to stick, but uh, other than that, it's been great. Controls here. Four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive. I usually leave it in four-wheel. We have the up and down for the rear attachment. We have slow and fast as far as uh, what gear range you want to be in. I think I have never once moved it from Turtle. Um, very hilly property. Very dangerous to be going at any good speed here. Now there, our deck height adjustment is over there. The PTO adjustment and the deck height adjustment. And over in that corner right there is a uh, diff lock for the rear diff. And... Um, I've only had to use that once, thankfully. Fuel tanks right here, and I'll tell you what, it's uh, pretty darn efficient. It gets probably twice as many run hours as the garden tractor does um, off of the same amount of diesel fuel. So, you know, gas versus diesel. Diesel definitely definitely has the advantage there. The ropes is down, but I'll, I do not mess around. I definitely use the ropes um, when I'm mowing or when I'm doing any work. The only reason I had it down here today is because I'm getting ready to put it in the garage. And it won't clear the garage door, which can be an issue. Uh, rear lights and flashers, they all still work. I don't drive this thing on the road much other than plowing snow, so it's not a ton there. But in the back here, you can see <laughs> it's dirty. It's dirty, but that's exactly what, uh, what they're designed to be, right? And all this is different hookups that you're not going to see on a regular BX series. Only the 25 or the 23 will have that. That's all that extra stuff for hooking up and the backhoe. And we have our rear hydraulics here for the uh, backhoe as well. And then there's the top part of our three-point hitch there. You will also notice, if I back out here, this does have two-inch spacers. Got these on Amazon. The, the, uh, they fit a Jeep. I think it's Jeep Cherokee. And so two-inch spacers push that out. A lot better balance. And so that's something, if you're going to buy one of these things or if you own one and you live in any kind of property with hills, probably a really good idea to get that. But uh, these tires are water-filled or liquid-filled. They're antifreeze-filled. And then we also have uh, wheel weights. One of the cool things I found out there, and you might be able to make out the Craftsman, is that uh, the uh, wheel weights for uh, Husqvarna or Craftsman GTs fit this perfectly fine. So the rim pattern's the same and everything, so that was really cool. All right, on this side, we have our engage or disengage for the rear uh, PTO back there. And... Uh, this one here is for engaging our mower deck, the middle mount, the PTO basically. So really nice there. The seat, I'm not going to do it because I'm one-handed right now holding the camera, but the seat, you lift up right there, lifts up, swivels around, and faces the back when we want to use it as a backhoe. One thing I would like to get, and I've been thinking about it since I bought it, is some armrests. They make a kit that bolts on the back here and gives you armrests. Just never got around to it, I guess. Seatbelt, yeah, I use that here. It really won't do you any good with the ropes up if uh, <laughs> you know, if you crush to death by your tractor when you fall out of it. Anyway, here we go. Here we got our temperature gauge, our fuel gauge on this side over here. If you can see it, lights on and off, hazards, turn signals. You can tell I don't use the turn signal very often, but there's our headlights there. On this side, we do have uh, like a throttle lock. And then we have our throttle adjustment, uh, slow versus fast. I usually keep it right at about 2,800 RPM when I'm doing stuff. Some people say to go all the way up to three. I just, I just don't. And we do have a lock if you want to lock your loader in place so if somebody doesn't accidentally mess with it, you can do that as well. We can do this with hands. There we go. Got stink bugs. There we go. Well, here it is, uh, in all its glory, this little three-cylinder engine. That's the engine that could. There's uh, been nothing really to report here. I've had to you know, do regular maintenance on it. The only two problems that this tractor has had since I owned it, the first one is that there is an elbow down here in the fuel tank, and you had a fuel starvation because where the fuel went down through that elbow, there must have been trash in the diesel, and it plugged right there at that little L. By the book, it would have taken quite a few hours to... Uh, to get that cleaned out i was able to kind of cheat and i blew it out with or vacuumed it out through the bottom side and uh, by the book i think it was 14 hours you have to take everything off if it wasn't a 25 it wouldn't be as bad but yeah that sounded horrible 
So I'm glad I was able to fix that. That is the first problem I've had with it. The second one is kind of a common occurrence with these. The hydrostatic transmission here has a fan somewhere deep down inside of that. And it's not unusual when you're going through uh, you know, rough terrain and working in the mud or whatever that dirt and stuff gets kicked up, breaks those fan blades fairly quickly. And so you could have a you know shortened life of your transmission. Although I've never heard of a transmission failing on one of these things. It is something to be aware of. So I did go ahead and replace that when I had it in here last year. And uh, you can get a protective shield for the bottom of it, but that doesn't do me any good because once you put the shield on, you can't use your mid mower deck, so that doesn't really help you out much at all. That's about it. I haven't had to do any uh, major or minor work to the engine. No glow plugs, no fuel injectors. I haven't even replaced the belt. Um, just everything you see here other than filters and fluids is original. In, in fact, the, uh, the battery which I better knock on some wood as soon as I'm done with this video, is a 2012 original. And uh, here we are in 2022. So that's, uh, yeah. Anyway, there we go. I guess I'll just wrap this thing up here. So that's it. Would I recommend a Kubota BX series to someone who has a small farm or a homestead or who is trying to develop their property? You bet, you bet. Um, you know, there's... Uh, Coity, I think, is one of the brands of tractors we looked at. There is um, obviously John Deere, which is a premium brand, and there's several others that I just can't think of right now. But out of all of them, the Kubota seems to have the most reliable record, and that might hurt some John Deere fans. But I have a friend who is a John Deere fan, and he's currently experiencing the misery of trying to get parts for a John Deere when you want to do the work yourself. I guess that'll do it for today. If you have any questions about the operation of this thing um, or you want to see it in action, I am going to be doing a project here shortly where the Kubota is going to have both the bucket and the uh, backhoe on it. And uh, I'd be happy to show you more of it working in action or how to operate the loader, that kind of stuff there. But until then, my friends, take care.